Hello, you dark-hearted, daft-arsed cunter kinties. Fancy fathoming another light garnishing of rent and retail release nicks with me, your virtual reality valley pig, and Steph, the high plains drifter. Straddle the main brace, loosen the mizzen mast. Let's go to work. This week we've got classic cops, eternal life, a private dick, some adult animation, and plenty of nubile young cheerleaders. First up, a couple of films from animator with attitude Ralph Bakshi, starting with Fritz the Cat. For those of you who don't know, the infamous Fritz is a dope-smoking, sexually overactive feline in the great tradition of underground comics like the Freak Brothers. Fritz the Cat was the original adult animation, which started life in the 60s as a comic strip by Robert Crumb, then Lord of the Rings director Bakshi brought it to the big screen, much to the dismay of its creator. Oh, God! Oh! Oh, Jesus! Awful. My, my soul is tormented. Jeez. Oh, no. I've been up and down the four corners of this big old world. I've seen it all. I've done it all. Jeez. Oh, wow. I've fought many a good man. I've laid many a good woman. I've had riches and fame and adventure. I've stood face to face with danger and death countless times. Hey, why, why, are I've... you somebody famous? I think I saw you in a movie once. Hey, try not to interrupt, huh? I've tasted life to the fullest, and still my soul cries out. Yes, cries out in its hungry, tortured, racked quest. Look at the good More. part of life. Things aren't all bad. Gee, he's handsome. You, you can help me. You must save me, but by so doing, you too will be saved. Well, I, I'd like to, but what can I do? <laughs> lovely set of eyes there. Fritz is a disillusioned student at NYU who wants more out of life. You get to know about him quickly when right at the start he picks up three young women, gets them nude and has his wicked way with them. Garfield, he is not. Oh boy. Closeness and fulfillment of our hidden desires through which we reach the truth. Fulfillment is important. Now, don't you think so, Winston? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Very important. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. Now, now I'm getting to the truth, I think, yes. Oh, yeah. Mm, so it's wow. getting all very clear now. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Okay, Weston. Uh, here come the truth. Oh, you got the uh, word. Uh, oh, yeah, such an existential little body. Jeez. Wow. Oh, shit. Maybe we better go, huh? Uh, no, 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 not at all. No, look, look, here. You get down over here, and you down... That's right, down like that. That's right, right under here. Oh, watch the foot. No, right, that's right, right under here. Okay. Uh, ready, everyone. Here we go. <laughs> Fritz the Cat is like a politicised, pro-revolutionary Disney complete with shagging smack addicts, spliffs and city riots. Nonetheless, it's a serious attempt to address some of the issues that were at the forefront of American society at the time, namely the class-ethnic divide. The streetwise dudes are on the run from the man who has got pigs who keep the brothers down. Hey, boss. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Not more, take two. Come on, be a club member. That's it. <laughs> Three, take four! Come on, five, six, seven! That's it, baby! <laughs> <laughs> Can't lose them now, no, indeed. <laughs> Join, honey! Join! Stay loose! <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Next we have Heavy Traffic, another drug-induced animated feature from Ralph Bakshi, this time following the exploits of Michael, a young artist who wants to experience life. <laughs> Say hello to Rosalind, Mike. What do you think of my... What a pair of nights. Uh, so, Ron, I mean, you know, uh, you, you're going to catch a cold. Come on, Michael, come on. Uh, 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 how do you like it, Michael? Uh, all you have to do is want it. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, any way that uh, pleases you the most, baby. I just want more pizza and oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> 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 Yeah, you know, 
guys just better take it easy. I'm telling you that right now, we're going to have a lot of trouble up here. Oh! oh. She had it coming. Heavy Traffic uses montages, photographs, archive material, and even some Edward Hopper art. I think it was a serious attempt to inject some reality into the world of animation because of the ruling white hegemony that controlled the film industry at the time. It's kind of ironic that the components of these strange films have percolated down into the hipper-than-thou work of Quentin Tarantino, who has been accused of appropriating black street culture and even wanting to be a brother himself. Who do you think I am? Mark fucking Lawson? Fritzica and Heavy Traffic are out to buy now. There you go, the usual. Oh. Steph, see that car out there? It's been parked there for at least ten minutes. That means it's stolen and abandoned. I've got a bright idea for that bastard! Up next, one, two, three double bills of Starsky and Hutch. Nigel! The ultimate TV cop team duo, no, not really, based on the marginal movie success of Freebie and the Bean, Dave Starsky and Ken, love that name, Hutchinson, are a couple of maverick, too tight flare wearing dressed to the left cops who seem to accidentally solve crimes in between drinking bottles of beer and playing 10 pin bowling. Yes, folks, David Soule, Paul Michael Glazer, and Antonio Fargas are back, saving our streets from the dregs of society. There are six episodes in all, one of the best, Jillian, has a heroic duo investigating a series of murders that might be be linked to a freaky mother and son pornography racket. All units in the vicinity, a 211 in progress at Stardust Adult Books, 1620 Marshall Street. Another porno. And it's still us. They went that way. Had a bad week, Harry. Okay. Yeah. Starsky and Hutch, 70s cop-like drama for middle-class revisionists everywhere. Man, those cats are good. They're not really. They never have a clue until Huggy Bear tells them where to look. Steph, I think it's time we left this place. Quick, come inside in the warm. Come in. Ah! Oi! <laughs> what have you done to my fucking car? Hey, Ag. How's it shaking, Pepper? My counsel advised me to take the Fifth Amendment. You know who killed Olmec? A cat named Grossman and his mother. His mother? Yeah, came out here a couple of months ago from Cleveland. Syndicate Heavyweight said if he could take hold of the territory, they'd make him their main man out here. Yeah, but his mother. Take it easy, will you? Where can we find his heartwarming team? Venus Massage. Venus Massage. Ain't anything sacred anymore? Yeah, I know what you mean. Hello? Hello? Is that the police? Ah, the 70s. What self-respecting student of subcultural archives could resist Starsky and Hutch? The way that Starsky's faded frayed flares break over his blue Adidas trainers. Mm. It's that kind of period attention to detail that's missing from today's sad retro archivists. Starsky and Hutch, all six episodes out to buy for Monday. Cover me! Up next, Zero Effect, which stars Bill Pullman as Daryl Zero, the world's greatest private detective. Ben Stiller co-stars as Steve Arlo, his sidekick, General Dog's body and spokesperson. 
They're hired by blackmail victim Ryan O'Neill, who's also lost his keys. Okay, Gregory Stark, how desperate? Scale of one to ten. Bordering on manic. <laughs> Do I need to go there? Um, I think you'd want to check it out. There isn't too much to go on here. I'd have to go there? Yep. I don't like it. Oh. Sure, yeah, tell him I'll do it. Wait, wait d don't you even want to hear what it is? You can see why Total Film Magazine voted Zero Effect Film of the Month. The moment Bill Pullman turns around with his stupid hair and eccentric act, you know it's a film for critics to like. Well shot, well lit and well acted, but ultimately a piece of cinematic ephemera that floats out over the ether like a kind of gas. Bill has sacrificed basic social skills in order to hone his detecting genius. He meets his match and falls into a web of intrigue, blackmail, murder and donkey sex. No, I made the last one up. You're an accountant? So you would know. What is the Corodium 3 deduction? The Corodium 3 deduction? <laughs> That's a very good question because that, in fact, is probably the most widely misunderstood deduction in the book. Really? Indeed. The Corodium 3 deduction is an incentive used by large manufacturers who are able to moderate their use of class 3 decay toxins such as Corodium and... Malgorium. But Darrell's not much cop at remembering his own lies, and pretty soon he's been rumbled, which isn't very good for the world's greatest detective, is it? Zero effect, quirky, zany, weird, wild, and all those other adjectives, but you can never forget it's a film. And as for Ben Stiller as Watson to Bill Pullman Sherlock, then it makes you wish you could devise the perfect murder, kill him, and bury him in the garden. In short, you love this if you want to make movies yourself. Two million dollars for a name and an address. Cash. We can go to the bank right now. You're willing to give me $2 million so you don't have to do this thing tomorrow? I'm willing to give you $5 million. How much does he pay you? $5 million. So you can kill someone right away instead of a day later. No, no. For $5 million, you do it. So what if I was to walk in there right now? Which is not in there, Star. Well, what if I want to find out for myself? What would happen? I'll shoot you. Really, I will. I have a gun and everything. Amazingly, Zero Effect was directed by Jake Kasdan, the 21-year-old son of Lawrence Kasdan, who directed The Big Chill and Accidental Tourist. Zero Effect is an enjoyable who and why done it, but as for Daryl Zero being the greatest detective in the world, I thought he was more like Ace Ventura than No Shit Sherlock. And it's out to rent from Monday. Open up! Please! Come back in part two for a bit of this. You're a remarkable girl, Kitty. Yes. And you don't know just how remarkable yet, but you will, Fred. <laughs>
Kate soon sees the errors of her ways. She realizes that jocks and cheerleaders have feelings too, but she's soon on the case of the illegal gambling ring. Will Kate finish her paper? Will Mesa State win the championship or throw it away because of a greedy coach? This is gripping teen stuff. Oh, oh, oh Baba, that pinches. Oh, think of a happy place. Wanna get high? I don't think so, Ron. I've been getting such bad vibes from you lately. Oh, yeah? Maybe that's because you're feeling guilty about something. My, you are surly tonight. Are you getting your period or what? What I'm getting is tired of waiting for you to finish servicing that rah-rah playboy of yours. So that's it. All right, I won't deny it happened. It was part of my research. Oh, it is to laugh. A quick one-two for the old journalism class, is that it? Well, how was it? Not bad. In fact, it was great. I loved it. Now, would you like to hear the details? Would that turn you on? It would, wouldn't it? Well, let's see. Where shall Shut I begin? Well, now we are finally down to basics, aren't we, You know, Mom? the only reason I don't beat the crap out of you is because I think you'd like it. Another Jack Hill film pointing out the differences between American subcultural groups, this time the hippies and the jocks. Obviously, Jack thinks the hippies are even more wacky than the jocks as they gang rape a young cheerleading virgin. But don't worry, she overcomes the trauma of that in about three seconds flat. So, another cheap exploitation flick labouring under the illusion of the women's movement in order to show us some tit. Jack Hill films are more moralistic than David Lynch movies, but it's got loads of his trademarks in it. So, a serious attempt to show the emergent feminist movement in 60s and 70s America? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Ah! Oh, my! Oh. I want you to round up some of the family members and come right over. I got this really fantastic thing going. We are going to do something really depraved. A nihilistic happening, you dig? Huh? Are you ready for this? We are going to gangbang a cheerleader. Dick. Gonna be your night of nights, kid. Make up for all those wasted years you've been saving it. Hell made the swing and cheerleaders in between Coffee and Foxy Brown, but it's unfortunately not on par with his black exploitation classics. There's plenty of cheerleaders, but there's an unfortunate lack of swinging. Look out for Colleen Camp from the Ice Storm and Cheryl Smith, who was in Independence Day. The swing and cheerleaders is available to buy now. Emancipation! There you go, you couple of tasty geezers. Lock stock and two smoking barrels. The Simpsons. Too hot for TV. 88 minutes of pure dead brilliance with some very special guest artists and plenty of previously unseen material. I must say it's great to see the Yanks able to laugh at themselves and that's what The Simpsons does so well with a spot on parody of the Jerry Springer show. Cartoons once again taking you places where real people can't or wouldn't go. Dracula got his groove back. Hello. Oh great. Mormons. Actually we're quantum Presbyterians. And we've come to see my daughter. Oh, Lord. I was hoping this day would never come. Huh? What are you talking about? You mean you never told him? <sighs> I guess I've been in denial. Homer, Kang is Maggie's father. <gasps> ah! You intergalactic hussy! How could you? <laughs> Was he better than me? The Cartridge family sees Homer buying a gun after a football riot makes him fear for his family's safety, although they'd be much safer in the middle of a riot than being around Homer brandishing a gun. Close your eyes, Marge. I've got a surprise for you. Mm. OK, open your eyes. <laughs> Hey, it's a handgun! Isn't it great? This is the trigger, and this is the thing you point at whenever you want to die. Homer, I don't want guns in my house. Don't you remember when Maggie shot Mr. Burns? I thought Smithers did it. That would have made a lot more sense. Hey, Dad, can I borrow the gun tomorrow? I want to scare that old security guard at the bank. Only if you clean your room. Mm -hmm. No! <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. No one's using this gun. The TV said you're 58% more likely to shoot a family member than an intruder. TV said that? But I have to have a gun. It's in the Constitution. Dad, the Second Amendment is just a remnant from revolutionary days. It has no meaning today. You couldn't be more wrong, Lisa. If I didn't have this gun, the King of England could just walk in here anytime he wants and start shoving you around. You want that? Huh? Do you? In the final episode, Grandpa remembers an old home remedy that could help Marge and Homer rejuvenate their tired sex life. It works. Marge and Homer shag like they've never shagged before. And soon Homer and Grandpa are on the road selling the miracle elixir of lust. Sir! Uh, hello, sir! Yes. You look like a man who needs help satisfying his wife, so... Oh! Oh! I guess people have some sort of moral objection to our sex drug. Let me sell it, you idiot! <gasps> Step right up, folks, and witness the magnificent medicinal miracle of Simpson and Sons patented revitalizing tonic. Put some honor in your larder with our energizing, moisturizing, tantalizing, romanticizing, surprising, herprising, revitalizing tonic. I doubt very highly that one elixir could boast so many fantastic properties. <laughs> What say we amscray out of here and have a wild wing ding at the cyclotron, Doctor? Anything you say, Professor. Whoa. And isn't it funny when America's got such a lot of Bible belt punching, gun toting anti abortionists, it still manages to produce some of the best comedy in the world? Perhaps when you're faced with religious intolerance and racial bigotry, the best way to defuse the situation is to ridicule it and laugh at it. <laughs> the Simpsons Too Hot has got the lot and it's out to buy now. <laughs> Homer, how did it feel to learn your baby was fathered by a drooling space octopus? It made me angry, Jerry. Angry and tired. Well, you're about to get a whole lot angrier because we have the extramarital, extraterrestrial backstage in a soundproof booth where he can't hear us. I hear all. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Kang. Hey, yeah. Okay, Steph, watch, listen, and learn. It's competition time. Yes, and we've got a sumptuous sheepdog of Coen Brothers videos, the collective noun being a stool of Coen Brothers videos, to give away to the lucky bandy-legged Buscemi like who can answer this one simplistic question, Steph! Which Coen brother edited The Evil Dead? We'll randomly wrench the answers from the twisted metal of a banged-up Ford Cortina. Send your answers by fax only on 0141 353 666. Oh! Oh, Steph, I think that brown bread was gone off. I think it was infected with ergot fungus. That's what accounts them for the strange hallucinations. <laughs> little people. I'm a little girl, I'm a little girl. No, I'm a great big man, I'm a great big man. Little oh, people. Barabas, 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 barabas. Oh, I went to her, I had to pull the sponge. I pulled the sponge, I pulled the sponge. Ah, no, I'm a little girl, I'm a little girl. No, I'm a great big man. Two hours till the pub opens. Let 